Hello, I'm Catherine Mulgrew, the Global Philanthropy Manager here at the University, and I am just delighted to welcome you all to this presentation today. We have alumni and folks from across the globe joining us, folks from California and Canada, the East Coast of the US, as well as closer to home here in Edinburgh and London, and further afield in Singapore and Hong Kong. You are all very warmly welcomed and we're delighted to have you joining us. I'm so pleased to be joined today by my colleague, Jessica Constable, as well as Dr. Neil Kroll, the head of Winding Participation, and especially alumnus, Ryan McCaig, a former talent scholarship recipient and law graduate of ours. So Neil, Jess, and Ryan, thank you so much for being with us. Now, just a few items of housekeeping before we get started. Folks, you've all joined the call on mute and with your cameras off. We are very happy for you to keep both of those off throughout the duration of the presentation. Just a friendly reminder that the session is being recorded. And if any questions come to mind during the presentation, I would encourage you to put them into the chat function. And at the end, Jessica will help facilitate those questions to Ryan and Neil. So go ahead and type those into the chat function as they come to you. And at the end of the presentation, we will address them. We are so pleased to have you with us today, Ryan. Ryan grew up in care in the East End of Glasgow, but through hard work and positive connections, he managed to follow an untraditional path and got into law at Strathclyde. Now, after graduating in 2018 with a first class degree, Ryan was offered a postgraduate talent scholarship to complete his diploma in professional practice at Glasgow and he is now a trainee solicitor at Thornton's Solicitors. We are so grateful to you, Ryan, for coming along today to share your experience and story with us. So I'm going to hand things over to you now, okay? Thank you very much, Catherine. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, everyone, depending on where you are in the world. Um, as Catherine said, my name is Ryan McQuaig. I'm a trainee solicitor at Thornton's Law in my final year of training, and I'm also the chair of a charity called Who Cares Scotland. But most importantly for today, I am a proud University of Glasgow graduate. Before I talk to you about my time at the university, I hope you don't mind me telling you about why I wanted to become a lawyer in the first place. Ever since I was a young child, I've been affected by the law in ways which many people will never experience. I grew up in a place called Easterhouse in the east end of Glasgow, and Easterhouse is a place regularly named one of the most deprived areas in the UK. My community was affected by poverty and the social impacts of poverty. Addiction, exclusion, violence, intergenerational childhood trauma, drugs, gangs, etc., were every day accepted aspects of daily life in an area like mine. Those issues reached across the community and into my own home. Two generations of addiction in my family preceded my birth. Poverty and mental health issues affected those who were supposed to look after me to such an extent that often my home was either a party or a battlefield with very little respite in between. Eventually, someone made an anonymous call to social work and the state intervened in my childhood. I was removed from my home by the state and placed into care. I have a very distinct memory of sitting in a back room of Glasgow Sheriff Court, drawing pictures with my social worker age six while in another room, a group of strangers were deciding my fate, deciding the contents of the court order about me that I wouldn't be able to understand. And even though I was so young, I remember feeling a very distinct feeling. I felt that I wasn't being heard, that I didn't have a voice and no one was speaking up for me. That feeling has stuck with me ever since. I noticed other things growing up in a deprived area too. My community was disproportionately imprisoned. As a teenager, Growing up in that area, I was stopped and searched so regularly by the police that I knew their first names. The picture that was painted for me growing up was that the law was something that happened to people like me and not something over which me or my community could ever have agency. There has always been something in me that wanted to change that. Eventually that embryo of injustice in my mind grew into the desire of becoming a lawyer. But becoming a lawyer was difficult and it required going to university and I didn't know anybody who'd ever been to university. But as Catherine said, thanks to positive relationships from people out with my tra traditional family structure, 
I was able to get some grades when I was older and working full time. And I was able to enter law school through non-traditional means, thanks to a widening participation programme at another university. When the opportunity to attend the University of Glasgow arose, it was one that I jumped at because this wasn't just university, it was Glasgow. And I'm sure most of you will understand what I mean by the added level of awe that the architecture of the campus and the renowned reputation of one of the leading law schools in the country added to the pressure that I'd already put on myself as the first person in my family to attend university. Here I am on my first day at Glasgow. I remember standing at those gates, looking around myself as I waited to meet Dan Keenan, the dedicated contact for care experienced students at the university. Dan approached me and he saw me looking around and he said, it looks good, doesn't it? And I said to him, I can't believe I'm actually here. And Dan looked me in the eye and said, but you deserve to be here as much as anybody else. And for somebody with my background, that was very powerful to hear. Attending the university as a postgraduate and doing a course which is a prerequisite for my chosen profession added an extra layer of pressure. I had to be there and my fees were no longer paid by the government. And I was entering a profession such as law, which comes with additional financial burdens, such as the cost of networking events, textbooks, and the fact that not attending a private school is still seen as a disadvantage in some quarters. I started to struggle financially and it looked like I might not be able to complete my studies. But Dan had told me about the talent scholarship and by that time we had a relationship and I knew that I could trust him. He told me the support was available for me. He helped me complete an application. And what's best about that process is that Dan was able to vouch for me. I didn't have to tell my story or justify my background over and over again. The process was straightforward. And what's more, it wasn't just financial support, but it was the relationship and a powerful statement that this ancient Russell Group University wanted me to achieve. So the scholarship and my relationship with Dan and the wraparound support that he and the rest of the team provided for me were the difference to me finishing my studies and pursuing my dream career and not. That's literally what it meant to me. So when I was asked if I would be interested in speaking to you today, I didn't hesitate for a second. For all I know, the person who funded my scholarship might be listening today. So first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you for making it possible for me to pursue my dream career. But it's more than just me. The education that I've been able to pursue will cause a generational shift in my family. It won't just benefit me, it will benefit my children, their children and so on. A cycle has been broken by education and that's what social mobility initiatives should be about. By allowing just one person to achieve their potential based on ability and not their ability to pay, you create an intergenerational ripple effect, the total impact of which I will never be able to describe, but I can try. And that's the other reason why I'm here today, because now I have a voice. That wee boy who was in that courtroom, scared and without a voice, is now on a career path where, he be, where I'll be able to go into that same court and be a voice for other people. And today I'm the voice of the next generation of talent scholars who will face similar challenges to which I have faced, but those will be compounded by a global pandemic, which we all know will widen inequalities across the world. So if you're thinking about funding a scholarship or continuing to do so, I hope that listening to me today has helped illustrate the life-changing impact that being able to pursue an education can have. I also hope that in the years to come, my career takes me to a place where I can sit where you're sitting, looking at somebody who I've helped get through their education. Because for me, any success that I go on to achieve will have been a ripple effect of those original acts of kindness. So I'll be sure to pass it on. And if enough of us do that together, we can help make the world a fairer place. Thank you uh, for listening to me. I'm going to hand you back over, um, but I'd be delighted to answer any questions you have at the end. Oh, thank you, Ryan. What a powerful and inspiring story. We are so grateful to you for sharing your voice with us today. Um, just a reminder, if you have, as Ryan mentioned, if you have questions for him or for Neil in the next segment, please go ahead and put those into the chat function and Jess will help to facilitate those um, and the answering of them when Neil is finished. So I now am going to turn things over to my colleague, Dr. Neil Kroll, who will share some more information with you about our talent scholarship program and the university's commitment to widening participation. So over to you, Neil. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you very much. Um, 
Hello, everybody. Th thank you very much for joining us today. I'm, I'm uh, delighted to be able to come in and chat with you. Um, as, as Catherine mentioned, I'm the Head of Wine and Participation at the University of Glasgow. Um, I've held that role for 11 years. I've worked in the field for about 20 years. And the, the role Head of Wine and Participation um, means a lot of things, a lot of different duties, a lot of, a lot of different responsibilities, some better than others. One of the, the better ones, though, I, I can say in all honesty, is that um, I am able to work with, with colleagues across the university. And um, in this instance that we're talking about today, work with my uh, development alumni contacts and colleagues, uh, work jointly with them in terms of being able to select and award and administer the, the scholarships that we, that we have here at the university. Uh, whether those be our talent scholarships for, for undergraduates or, or postgraduates, as, as Ryan um, just described, um, or humanitarian scholarships for asylum seekers, refugees, um, or, or even going, going to travel bursaries that, that, that we have now for, for students. All of these made possible by donations made by, by alumni and philanthropists to the university. Um, Ryan has, has just um, spoke spoken very passionately about um, about, about his, his personal experiences. Um, I like to think I don't need a reminder of why, why I always do this work, but it's, it's, it's always, it's, I'm, I'm always delighted to, 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 to hear our students speak and, 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 and to give us all a reminder um, as to why we do this work at the university. What, what I'm going to do for the next few minutes is to just give you a bit of context um, to, to place around Ryan's um, own personal story in terms of the approaches we take uh, to, widen, to widening participation, widening access here at Glasgow, and the, the, the impact that the donations made by donors has on that work and how it allows us to do so much more. Now, we take a very holistic approach to widening access at the university in terms of we look at what we regard as the whole learner journey. So we look at what we need to do for students pre-entry uh, when they're in school, college, or, or on an access course for maybe for, for, for adult returners to, to, to university. We look at what we need to do for them at the point of application in terms of advice and guidance, helping people um, get through that, that, that application point. Then the point of admission to the university, transition into higher education, which is a crucial point in anybody's learner journey, uh, but, but um, very crucial for, for our widening access uh, cohorts of students. And then on degree in terms of the support that we can provide for students to make sure they're successful uh, on their degrees up to the point of graduation and then beyond into, into, into their future lives, whether that be postgraduate study, again, as, as in Ryan's case, or uh, then further on to, or, onto the world at work. So in terms of the approaches we take, we take several approaches. One key thing uh, amongst all the approaches, though, is, is it's partnership work and, and widening access work only succeeds if we work in partnership with a whole diversity of uh, partners across different sectors. In terms of the pre-entry work, we run big, broad um, pre-entry programmes where we work across the west of Scotland, 14 local authorities um, uh, within the west of Scotland, 160 secondary schools, all the secondary schools in the area, we work with all of the colleges and, 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 and several um, third sector organisations. The idea behind running these big programmes is that we aim to work with anybody who would benefit from taking part in the programmes, anybody who's eligible through the various widening participation targeting criteria we use. So that, that, that's very much the aim that we do, to, to run scalable programmes that allow us to continually expand as we need to, to work with all the learners um, uh, with whom we, we, we would like to work. Within that, though, another approach we take is we work with individuals, individuals and cohorts or groups of students who, um, within those big numbers, have more specific uh, uh, needs and, and require more specific support. And, and Ryan is a perfect example of, of one of those students, you know, somebody with care experience, or, you know, it could be someone who's estranged from family. Um, somebody who has caring responsibilities, again, asylum seekers, refugees. Um, we have the first points of contact. Now, Ryan, again, um, mentioned uh, somebody called Dan, Dan Keenan, who's within the Widening Access team. We have those first points of contact within, within my team, the, 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 the WP team there, and they will work across the whole learner journey with students pre-entry, advice and guidance to come into the university, that transition, and support throughout the degree, trying to, try, trying to provide the support and guidance that's needed at each stage. So that's sort of pre-entry um, support in terms of the big programmes, individuals. 
In terms of on degree support, this is really where um, the real benefit of, of the um, donations from alumni comes in because we provide academic help if it's required. We'll provide, you know, emotional counselling help if that's needed, but financial help is, is a major part of what we can do on uh, for on degree support. We know that this is one of the biggest impacts in terms of um, students being successful uh, on degree. And of course, the very element of, of receiving financial help is, is, is obviously a, a major help in term. And Ryan again mentioned the different costs that can come with, 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 with different courses that, that students will take. But over and above that, the very fact that we as a university are able to say to a student, we have faith in you. We, we, we believe that you should be here at this university. And because of that, we're going to give you a bursary and that, that, that we, we feel you deserve. Uh, the fact that we can do that, and it may be a student who's maybe not experienced um, very much of that in their life up to that point, that can have a big impact on a student. Ryan very um, clearly outlined that there. I've um, received that feedback from several students over the years, so we know that that we, we know that that that, 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 that impact is there um, in terms of the university just saying we have faith in you. We underpin all our work with research and evaluation so that we take an evidence based approach and we have data that shows the impact of our scholarships. Our talent scholarships, which we run for, as, as I said, for undergrads and postgraduates. They've been going for now 13 years now. Uh, the undergraduate one started 13 years ago. The, the postgrad have been going for maybe about eight or nine years. We have the data over the period of those years, which shows that students who have received those bursaries perform better than students who are from comparable backgrounds. Now, talent scholarship recipients, by definition, are amongst the most vulnerable, disadvantaged students that we have within um, our University of Glasgow student body, living in, 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 in very difficult circumstances. It would be expected and, and, and that we would have a high attrition rate amongst those students, um, given all those factors, all those circumstances. What we know from the data on, on, on the, the talent scholarship um, recipients, though, is that the impact the scholarship has negates that impact and, and, and actually allows people to, to actually perform higher than they may even have done so, you know. so so. They perform that the, the scholarships do have that, that 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 absolute impact in terms of allowing students to be successful who otherwise may well have dropped out, may not have come to university in the first place, may not have turned up on the first day, may have struggled because life circumstances out with uh, their control would prevent them from from um, remaining successful, being able to be, being able to stay on course. Receiving the scholarship can be that factor which, which, which enables somebody in these circumstances to complete their course and 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 uh, achieve a good degree with the enhanced prospects, life prospects, employment prospects that that all brings. So, what I would just like to finish by saying is, I would personally like to thank all uh, all um, those of you who have donated um, to us. Already, I would like to thank anybody who has taken the time to consider donating um, to us to enable us to continue to help students within this way. This is given which truly does make a difference and it does help talented learners from very, with very challenging lives, from very challenging circumstances. It does help these learners to be successful and it allows them to go and improve and then change their lives. Ryan's already thanked you. I would just thank you um, as well and uh, happy to take any questions along with Ryan if anybody has them. Thank you, Neil. Um, my turn also to thank you for sharing so much important information on the program and its impact. And uh, thank you also, Ryan, as well. Um, and I'd like to add a third thank you in advance to our talent scholarship donors who are on the call. I hope that you're feeling very proud just now of all that you're helping these young people to achieve. Um, and for those of you who feel galvanized to support by what you've heard, uh, there are several options available, so I'll outline them quickly before we get to questions that have been submitted for Ryan and Neil. Um, an undergraduate talent scholar receives £1,500 a year for the duration of their degree, and a postgraduate talent scholar receives £2,000, and they can spend that on whatever they need to. Um, it's just there so that they feel supported, um, whether it's for 
uh, computer equipment or it's for rent, they can decide. It's possible to donate towards the scheme in general, or you can fund a single named talent scholarship with a donation from £6,000. And if you have the ability and the desire, it's possible to fund an endowment um, which can be created with a gift from £60,000. We can facilitate tax efficient giving from the US and Canada, and also gift aid is an option in the UK. And we'll email out all this information to everybody who's on the call, uh, as well as hopefully a recording of the video afterwards, just in case you missed any of it. Um, and now for questions. So I'll, I've got a few that have been had submitted beforehand, and I've got a few that I can see popping up now in the chat. So I'll go first uh, of all to Mike Henson's question which is um, he notes that he really likes the terminology of the widening participation, which he hasn't seen um, used commonly in the US. Um, he was just saying it's very inclusive and welcoming. And Neil, is that sort of why the term was coined? Do you know what, uh, sort of its origins? So yeah, I, I mean, we, we, we use the term widening participation. We also, you know, the term access is used, widening access. Um, and, and, and in terms of what we mean by winning participation, it is exactly as you suggested there, Mike, it is, it's that inclusivity, it is the whole picture. It's, it's, it's not just getting somebody into the university, it's making sure that we've engaged with students beforehand to know what their needs are. It's making sure that we engage with students when they're in the university to, to make sure they're successful and also trying to keep in touch with them afterwards. And, 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 and also from their personal testimony and then from, you know, from, from the data that we have, making sure that what we're doing is working and, and always evaluating, uh, uh, always improving as we need to. So, so yeah, the, the, very much is, is that very much inclusive, that, that, that idea of inclusivity, absolutely. Great. Um, thank you very much. Um, and I'll also um, give you this question, Neil, which is about our, um, how many students we aim to support each year with talent scholarships. Um, maybe from, you could say about how many students you're, I was wondering about how many school students you're speaking to versus maybe how many applicants we have for scholarships or from that background. So, I mean, we, I mean, the, 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 the answer to that, I suppose that the general answer is we, we, we would aim to support as many as we possibly could, you know, and, and uh, obviously the more, um, the, the, the higher amount of funding we have, the, the, the more students that we, 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 can, we can support. I mean, we work with around about 25,000 school pupils a year, you know, and maybe about a couple of thousand adult learners a year. Of those, you know, about maybe 5,000 of those school pupils are senior age pupils. The work we do doesn't just bring people to Glasgow, it brings them to elsewhere, but um, we will take in, you know, in terms of target students, about a third of our intake a year of what we would regard as widening access students. So to the University of Glasgow, that's about, you know, 16, 1700 students that can be. So it's a, it's a high number. Um, at the moment, we're able to award usually around about 60 to 70 talent scholarships a year, the undergraduate ones. And I think it's about 25 postgraduate scholarships. So we always have higher demand than we're able to award. And it's always one of the more difficult parts of, of my job is, is, is taking part in the selection panel and having to select through people who we know are, are, are very much in need, but some are maybe not just as in need as others in, in, in terms of, we obviously have to just judge um, the, the, the applications relative to each other on their own merits, you know? So, so I mean, that, that's kind of the numbers that we're dealing with, but obviously the more that we can award, uh, the better really, absolutely. Absolutely, and we'll, we'll carry on trying to fundraise for as many as possible, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, Ryan, um, I just wondered now that you're out in the working world, um, how important did you feel having a Glasgow degree behind you was? You know, did you find it had a good weight uh, in your job applications, etc? Yeah, it's massively important, um, particularly in the professions in Scotland. Um, certain universities are still looked at as being um, favourable in terms of going for applications, and for me, it did open doors. But the programme at Glasgow was more about, it was about more than just that because the way that the, um, the, the, the programme, the, the postgraduate degree is, it's all um, practising lawyers who do most of the tutoring and stuff. So you're building up those relationships and you're in smaller groups with your future peers and stuff. So actually the way the programme was tailored was actually really helpful as well. So I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to come here. 
That's always good to hear. Um, and a question that we often get from our graduates uh, when I'm you know, talking to them about how much um, money is provided as part of the scholarships is whether it's enough. So not to put you on the spot too much, but as I said, I think, I'm not sure whether you received the, the postgraduate amount or, um, but you know, did you feel that it was able to support you enough? Do you think they should be higher? How did you feel? Well, I feel like I should say in behalf of everyone from my background that it could always be higher, um, obviously. But in terms of the amount that I received, which was two thousand pounds, it was it was enough for me to complete my degree, and and I might not have otherwise been able to do that. So it made a massive difference, and, and I'm incredibly grateful for it. Okay, that's good. That's reassuring. I can pass that on. <laughs> it still makes a difference. Um, Ash uh, from. Uh, the chat box now has just um, been very complimentary about your um, presentation today. So again, thank you for that. Um, but uh, she's asking for someone starting out uh, their studies from a similar background to yourself. Um, what advice would you give them? Is there anything that we you wish that someone from sort of the university had told them, or you know that they'd heard from their school, etc.? What would you pass on? Oh, that's a difficult one. Um... The first, the first thing I would say is that there is, there is absolutely no shortcut at university around hard work. And if you do the reading and you do the work and you engage with your learning materials, um, then you will achieve. But what I would also say is, I guess when I first started to go into university, I came in with a preconceived idea of what university was about and that it was about privately educated people and middle class people and that I wouldn't fit in and that I would, um, wouldn't make any friends or I wouldn't achieve. And actually through the relationships I was, be, I was able to build throughout my entire uh, learning journey, um, as you would probably refer it to, um, I actually found that people are just people and there are nice people from all backgrounds and there are not nice people from all backgrounds. And actually people want you to achieve. It's, it's good for everybody involved if you do well at university. So if you need help, you need support, um, just ask for it. That would probably be my number one tip. Super. Thank you so much. Um, and I think unless either of you have anything that you'd like to ask or add to uh, what you said today, um, I think we're going to wrap it up just to be sharp for one. Are you happy? You can share everything you needed to. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Just, just, just to say that again, just to say thank you. you know, thank you. Well, we are very grateful for you both for sharing your, your experience, your expertise, your knowledge with us today. We're really grateful to everybody who's taken the time to join the call and everyone who's requested a recording of the call. Um, we hope that you've all enjoyed it um, and we look forward to speaking to you all after this and hopefully growing our talent scholarship scheme and getting more students through the doors at Glasgow and out in the world with wonderful degrees. So thank you all again. And yeah, hopefully see you all soon. Take care.